Trayvon Martin was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Walking back from a 7-Eleven to the Sanford, Florida townhouse of his father's fiance on a dark and rainy February evening, Martin arose the suspicions of neighborhood watch leader George Zimmerman, setting in motion a chain of events that led to Martin's death, one of the most intensely followed trials of the 21st century, a trial that provoked arguments about America's gun culture and racial profiling. As the case progressed, in cities across the country, rallies calling for justice for Trayvon were held, and everyone from President Barack Obama to Hollywood stars to cable news personalities jumped into the debate over whether Martin's death was a murder or a justifiable use of force by a man fearing for his life. Shortly after 7 p.m. on Sunday, February 26, 2012, 17-year-old Trayvon Martin talked on his cell phone with his friend Rachel Jantel. He carried a bag of Skittles and an Arizona watermelon juice cooler as he headed along a sidewalk in the retreat at Twin Lakes Townhouse Community in Sanford. When George Zimmerman, driving his SUV to Target for an errand, looked out his window, he spotted Martin and concluded, as he told police in a phone call, he was a real suspicious guy. What about Martin made him suspicious is not completely clear. What is known is that Martin was unknown to Zimmerman. He was young, wore a hooded sweatshirt, walked slowly in the rain, and most central to the debates that would later ensue was black. Asked later that night in a police interview the cause for his suspicion, Zimmerman said, I've never seen him in the neighborhood. I know all the residents. It was raining out, and he was leisurely walking, taking his time, looking at all the houses. Zimmerman called Sanford police at 7.09 to report his suspicions. He told the dispatcher that the man in the gray hoodie was just walking around looking at all the houses, and now he's staring at me. Telling the dispatcher he's coming to check me out, Zimmerman asked, how long until you can get an officer over here? Told by the officer, we've got someone on the way, Zimmerman responded in frustration, these assholes, they always get away. Meanwhile, Martin was talking on his cell phone with a friend in Miami named Rachel Jantel. He explained to Jantel that a man was watching him, a man Martin described as a creepy-ass cracker. Jantel warned Martin that the man might be a rapist and urged him to run. Zimmerman told the dispatcher, shit, he's running, and got over to his car to follow him. The dispatcher, sensing that Zimmerman was giving chase, asked, are you following him? When Zimmerman replied, yeah, the dispatcher said, okay, we don't need you to do that. Zimmerman answered, okay. The dispatcher suggested that Zimmerman meet the arriving officer near the mailboxes, and said, yeah, that's fine. Seconds later, the four-minute call to the dispatcher ended. According to Zimmerman's police interview later that night, I was walking back through to where my car was, and he jumped out from the bushes and said, what the fuck's your problem, homie? And I said, I don't have a problem. And he goes, now you have a problem, and he punched me in the nose. According to Zimmerman, the punch knocked him to the grass, where Martin continued to pummel him. As I started screaming for help, I couldn't see, I couldn't breathe. Martin's friend, Rachel Jantel, would offer a somewhat different version of the encounter. According to Jantel, Martin was still on the phone with her when he and Zimmerman came face to face. She reported she heard Trayvon say, Why are you following me for? Then I heard a man breathing hard say, What are you doing here? Then she heard a bump, which she assumed was Martin's headset falling to the ground. As she yelled, Trayvon, Trayvon, she heard wet grass sounds and then kind of heard Trayvon saying, get off, get off, before the phone shut off. In Zimmerman's retelling of the ensuing struggle to Officer Dora Singleton later that night, Martin grabbed my head and started hitting it into the sidewalk. Zimmerman managed to pull himself back to the grass and yell, help me, help me, he's killing me. Martin, on top of him, responded by covering Zimmerman's mouth with his hand, and telling him, you're going to die tonight. At that point, as he tried to slide away, my jacket and my shirt came up, and I felt his hand go down on my side, and I thought he was going for my firearm. So I grabbed it immediately, and as he banged my head again, I just pulled my firearm and shot him. Zimmerman's version of events is largely consistent with the statement of eyewitness Jonathan Good, a resident of one of the townhouses close to the site of the fight, and the observer closest to the confrontation and considered by police to be its most reliable eyewitness. Hearing noise outside his residence, Good opened up a sliding door to hear cries of help, 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 
and see a person wearing a dark sweatshirt on top of a person wearing a lighter colored, perhaps red or white, he guessed. Zimmerman actually wore an orange dip-up sweatshirt, shirt or sweatshirt or whatever. Good told police, the black guy was on top, and the guy that was on the ground under him was definitely a lighter color. As Good ran to call 911, he heard the sound of gunfire. When he looked outside again, Good saw two gentlemen with flashlights asking what was going on, and one guy that was on the bottom said, I shot the other guy in self-defense. Good saw two gentlemen with flashlights asking what was going on, and the one guy that was on the bottom said, I shot the other guy in self-defense. The bullet from Zimmerman's gun penetrated Martin's chest, fatally wounding him. Officer Timothy Smith arrived at the scene less than two minutes after the shooting to find Zimmerman standing near Martin, who was face down in the grass and unresponsive. Zimmerman told Smith he shot Martin in self-defense. Smith took Zimmerman's gun and handcuffed him, noting that he was bleeding from his nose and the back of his head and that the back of his jacket was wet and covered with grass. Zimmerman was taken to the Sanford police station where he was questioned for five hours, first by Officer Singleton and then by Detective Chris Serino. Martin's body was taken to the morgue where it was tagged as John Doe. Hello, Chief. Hello, Chief. Hello, Chief. Hello, Chief. Crazy. Yeah. There's only what three hundred doors in this building, yeah. and there's twenty in this in this hall alone. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 No, no, I try not to breathe whenever I oh. like swab. <laughs> no, I've got to get the swabs from out of the jail. Oh my god, those guys is yeah, their breath smell like ass. <laughs> but uh, Thank you very much. Thank 
and I think I was only out of pocket about twenty five hundred dollars. And it was like a thirty thousand dollar expense, like with all the bills that kept coming and coming and coming. So I felt like I have really good insurance. It's mm -hmm. just if I have to go to a doctor I gotta pay for it. But it's no big deal because, you know, I'm paying hundred and fifty a month where my um fellow workers here who can get it through the city are paying for a family, you know, upwards of five or six hundred a month. So I'm saving you know what I mean? I'm saving $46 yeah. a month, so if I got to go to the doctor's once or, like once or twice a couple times a year and pay a couple hundred bucks, I'm still way ahead. I thought municipalities had good health mm -hmm. insurance. Wow. It's expensive. So. My father's... Yes, I, have. <laughs> and then I, do the, I do the benefits card where you can... Oh, yeah. Health savings and account. Yeah, health savings account. And I do that and use that to pay for the visit. Mm, that's a good idea. Tax free. Okay, my daughter's braces. That's what my mom did for me. <sighs> my dad's uh, retired army. I'll never forget. They uh, they have you know really good insurance. And when I was a kid, they uh, they have a form at the pharmacy that you can fill out for like non not prescription medicine like Benadryl or hydrocortisone bandages right. stuff like that. And I was a young kid and I took the form and I just started checking stuff off and <laughs> I was like, yeah, I, I want that, I want that, I want that. And I turned it in and they gave me a bag full of stuff and I went and I was all excited to my dad. And I said, Dad, look, all this stuff was free. I'll never forget. He said. None of this is free, George. I paid for this with my service. Uh, and I felt like garbage. <laughs> Someone's paying for it somewhere. Yeah. But that's good that he taught you that, you know, because a lot of these, a lot of people just think if someone else is paying for it, they don't care. It's free to them. Mm -hmm. you know? Go and take it all back. And that's why you'll have with people who have free Medicaid stuff, they'll go to the emergency room because the kids cost them too much, you know, instead of going, okay, this, this isn't really the appropriate place, but they don't care. The doctor will see them and, the, you know, the state will pay $1,000 or whatever it costs them to visit, and we'll they don't care. <laughs> he thinks I don't listen when I do. <laughs> you must have had a long... Day two. Yeah, I got back. I got out of here at one. Got back here at dawn. Got up at seven. Back at seven at one thirty. And then I got up at seven. Did you sleep uh, okay? Mm-hmm. I sleep fine. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I were you, I wouldn't have, you know. But you have to learn when you do this, just to not let things get to you. I mean, to me, it's just, it it's, sounds kind of cold to say it, but it's just, you know, this stuff like this happens, and we see it a lot, and if you let it get to you, you wouldn't be able to work here, you know? So it's just like, I don't know, you just learn to separate yourself from it, you know? Do you talk about it at home? No, not unless someone asks. That's what I heard. Go home and watch TV with my kids, play with my kids, but I don't ever talk about work unless they ask if I have a particular question and I'll tell them. But if they say, you know, how was your day at work? I'll be like, I'm sorry. That's at the end of it, unless they want particulars. How does it work? Like, you, you get called in as an investigator and then you're on duty until the investigation is, like, the preliminary investigation is. Yeah, we stay here until we have no more leads and we go home and or whatever we can, you know, to the point where there's really nothing else we can do at this point. Um, we can just come back in the morning. And then you have to come back at mm -hmm. your next schedule shift? Yes. You can't, and like, tell them I was out to one? Well, they have to give you six hours between shifts. Oh. So if you get out of here at one, but your schedule's in here, say your shift was supposed to start at 5 a.m., but you didn't get out of here until one, they have to be six hours. Oh, okay. So they can tell you have to be back in. It doesn't a lot of time, you're tired, but... No, by the time you get home... But your supervisor will work with you, you know, if you say, look, I'm really tired, and 
If there's nothing I can do between five and eight, I can start doing whatever I need to do at eight. So let's just come in later and get it done. But at that point, you've earned the overtime. You don't want to lose it. So That's it's just true. Like, you know? Yeah. It builds the pain. Were you an investigator when you worked at Detail? Mm-hmm. Oh. And I just do details to make extra, extra money. Did uh, Chief Lee put that email in your file? I don't remember seeing that. He might have. He might have sent something. He said he was going to. Oh, I mean, he may have put it in the file, but I don't remember. Who? Who? What did it say? That you went above and beyond, and you held on to the flyers even though th they were having a... No, I, don't, I didn't see that. He probably just put it in my phone. Huh. That was nice of you to do. It was nice of you to take care of it. Just, uh, that was a fun party. That was, was it? easy detailing. <laughs> Get paid and sit in a party and they're feeding me. And were they? Yeah, it was nice. <coughs> that was a really nice family. They had good Spanish food. <laughs> oh, really? I thought they were Middle Eastern. Oh, whatever they were. That's right. You're right. They were Middle Eastern. That's right. They were Middle Eastern. They had, the food was good. Really? Yeah, that's right. Now that you say it. They were Middle Eastern. I was at a party with a black family the other day. Sunday. It was a 9 year birthday party. And that's what was middle in the Okay. Hi. That's a good one. Thank you. I think I saw you last night. No, nope, you did not. No. Got to see the birthday. Thank you, George. You're yeah. welcome. I understand that you want to participate in a CVSA. Yes, yes, okay. You know what? I am going to grant your wish. On any medications? Uh, yes, sir. What kind of medication? You, oh, that's not. Oh, is that you drinking that now, sir? Oh, okay, sorry about that. That's fine. Um, I take uh, Libra for my stomach. Any narcotics? Uh, I think Adderall is considered. Adderall, okay. So I'm not worried about Adderall. And Tamazepam? Tamazepam, okay. You got ADHD or something? Yes, sir. You do? Okay. Yeah. I take it you're here talking because you had a really bad night last night. To say the least. Let me see the back of your head. Here doesn't look too bad. I'm sure if I need to bandage it, it doesn't look very good. Okay. I, like I said, I'm investigator on the same. Um, I am the CVSA operator. Matter of fact, I am the senior CVSA operator for the city of Sanford. Um, I've been doing these for quite a long time. And do you know anything about the CVSA? Yes, sir. You ever taken one? Uh, Apparently not. No. I'm sorry. I, I went to school for coming up with the science analysis, uh, computer stress analysis. Voice stress analysis. Oh. This is right there. Think we even put it right there for you so you can read it while I'm talking to you. Um, okay, you're right. It's, it's a uh, computer-aided truth verification system. Um, I'm sure you know uh, polygraphs and all that kind of good stuff. Um, uh, this is basically the latest and greatest and, and truth verification. Polygraphs are great. I think they are wonderful. But some of them have, you know, everything has to take it someplace. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. First things first, let's get rid of the administrative stuff. Yes, sir. Okay, what I need you to do, I need you to read this. Okay. And I need you to fill in this. And if you agree with the terms, sign down there and date it. Yes, sir. If you don't, say so. And then we'll talk. Um, sorry, is it the twenty seventh? Today is twenty seventh, you're first. I think you've been put into a time warp. Yes. You understand it? Yes, sir. Okay. Looks like you have been up pretty good. Yeah. All right. Back to this. Okay, the 
reason why we're here is yesterday you got into a situation, a very bad situation, and we are here to talk about that, okay? Yes. Um, I will tell you up front, uh, for me to be able to do this effectively, I know very little about what's going on in your case. Okay. I mean, very, very, very little. Okay, all I know other than until last night, I probably know a little bit more than what the news says, but not a whole lot, okay? Um, I know a little bit more now because... Um, the news, as far as I know, doesn't even know who you are yet. Thankfully. Thankfully, yes. Um, so your first name is George? Yes, sir. Okay. And your last name is Zimmerman? Yes, sir. I served on submarines with a Zimmerman. I thought it was Army. Out of, actually, he was out of, I think, Apodka? My name is Virginia. Yeah. Dude, actually, what's your date of birth? 10 5 Okay. Okay, the way this works is, like I told you, I know very little about you. I know very little about this case. My whole thing is what I'm going to do is you're going to tell me everything I need to know. Um, we're going to go through this, and we're going to do it. Then we're going to, me and you are going to develop questions. Okay. The way this instrument works is it's a computer. It's a Dell computer. You see, it's nothing more than a Dell top-book computer. All right. Nothing special about the computer. It's a computer. They read ones and zeros. That's it. Okay. What's special about it is a program. Okay. Um, the National Institute of Truth Verification, which should be on the front of it. Yeah, right, right there. Um, they're the proprietor of this, of the operating or the the program, the software. Okay. What that software does is it has the ability to read the tones on your voice. Yes. Okay. There's different parts parts of the voice. Okay, you have um, the AM and FM. FM is what you hear. Okay, when we speak, you hear FM. Yes. Um, the AM, for lack of a better term, is naming AM. It has really no no really functional um, naming of it. Um, just to make it easier for you to understand or for people to understand. Um, the AM rides on top of the FM. Okay. Normal speech, your FM carries it. Okay. And, and pretty much overshadows it. When uh, when stress is involved, that FM diminishes. And what happens is is uh, the AM rides on top, and you can actually see it. Okay. You say, well, that's all fine and dandy. Well, how can you, you know you should be able to to change it. But just like your breathing. Okay. There's a part where you can breathe, and you can you can make yourself breathe. You can consciously breathe. And there's other times when you don't even think about it, you don't stop breathing. Right. You just keep on breathing. Right. Okay, that's what that's controlled in your brainstem. Okay, and that's the same way your voice is. Okay, when you're not thinking about it, your voice is automatically regulated. But when you add stress to the factor that AM rides on top of the FM, and it, with the FM diminishing. And then you can see it. Okay, that's what we're looking for. You can't change it. You can't alter it. There's nothing you can do about it, except it's there. Okay. And so that's what we're going to be looking for. So what we're not looking for is I'm not really looking for you lying. Okay. What I'm looking for is your truthfulness and your level of stress. Yes. Okay. Um, and that'd be elevated in in the in the instrument when we roll the charts. Okay. Um, it's not invasive. Okay, it's just a microphone that you put right here, and you talk. You know, you know, you don't got you don't have the bands around you, and everything's hooked up there, and blood pressure cuff, and all this other crap all over you. That's all it is. Okay, it's it's nothing. It's very very uninvasive. Yes. Okay. Um. So with that in line, uh, in mind, um, what I need to do is drop you down or to make sure that there's no residual stress in you. Okay. To get a, get a good chart, I need to make sure that you're calm. Okay. All right. The events of last night. Okay. You can be in attack. The guy getting shot. Okay. You being investigated, investigator Serino and Sergeant Smith and and everybody, and all this attention and all this rigmarole. All right. You're stressed. Okay. Now you're here at the station talking to us again. You're stressed. Okay. I understand that. My job is to bring you down to a level to where we can sit here and talk, okay? Bring all this out on the table and then develop these questions, okay? There's going to be nine questions. Um, 
and we'll go over the questions before you'll know them all before we start, and then we'll go over it, and then we'll take the exam. Okay? Yes, sir. Can that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Right now, where would you say you're at as far as the stress level from one to ten? Ten being the worst. I don't know. You don't know? Six, maybe seven. Okay. Pretty high. I or yeah. mediocre because you're, you're kind of getting numb. It's like it's in the back of my mind. It's right, right, right. Okay. You nervous about sitting here talking to to me at the station? Not necessarily. No. no. You came here on your own free will, no yes, doubt, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, investigator Serena didn't say you're gonna come down here or I'm gonna thump you or anything like that. No, I'm gonna bring your eye out with a cigarette. No, okay. All right. Well, he does that. So <laughs> you gotta be careful with that. Um, Okay. okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start. And what I want to do is I want you, in your own words, I want you to give me the scenario from the start to finish. Okay? And I'm not going to interrupt you, I hope, for the most part. And then we're going to go back and we're going to dissect some stuff. Okay? Things that I think that um, I might have, have questions about. Okay? You see me writing, it doesn't mean anything. Okay? I might write this to write. Okay? Um, or it might be something that I want to ask you later. Okay? So don't. If you see me sitting here jotting or something, don't don't take it into offense. Sure. Okay. Okay. All right. I have one question. Okay. I can't really breathe out of my nose, so I have to breathe out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. Is it okay if I drink water during the day? Your mouth, you can drink as much water as you want. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Your nose broken? Yes, sir. Okay. So start from the beginning. About what time yesterday? <sighs> About 7 p.m. Uh, I left my house to go to the grocery store and buy my groceries for the week. What store did you go to? Target. Mm -hmm. And I was leaving my neighborhood when I saw this guy um, walking slowly in front of a house, looking towards the house. Um, and I knew he didn't live there, so it made me a little suspicious, and then he kept staring around him, or at me, and behind, and it arose my suspicion, and then he was, it was raining, and he didn't look like he was in a rush to get out of the rain, he didn't look like he was, uh, hardcore, physical, like, exercising, that like he was, you know, running in the rain, he just looked out of place, from what they've taught us, in, uh, the neighborhood watch. So I drove past him and I went to the uh, clubhouse and I called the non-emergency line. Mm -hmm. um, as I was on the phone with the non-emergency line, he walked past my car and I lost visual contact of him. Um, the operator asked me if I could get to somewhere where I could see or at least give them a direction of where he was headed. Mm -hmm. I said yes, so I pulled out and I drove adjacent to the clubhouse. And I was unfamiliar with the street name. The operator asked me what street I was on. And it's not the street that I live on, it's a side street that cuts through the neighborhood and I told him I didn't know. And they said, we need to know, when I was at the clubhouse, I gave them the clubhouse address, and they're like, we need to know what house you're in front of, and I said, listen, if you come to the clubhouse, you can go straight left, and you'll see me there. Uh, at this point, the guy walked around my car, he had his hand in his waistband, I didn't hear if he said anything, my windows were up, and it was raining. And I was on the phone with um, the non-emergency dispatcher, and then he disappeared back through a cut-through between the houses. Uh, while he was doing that, the operator asked me, they said, we need to know what exact address you're at. And I, all the houses I was next to, was the back of the houses, and they're townhouses, so mm -hmm. I didn't know the address. And they said, we need to know what street you're on or what address you're at. I think I, in the heat of the moment, I might have given them my street address. And they said, is that your home address or your 
where you're at now? And I said, I, I, that's my home address. And I got out of my car to look for a street sign so that I could at least tell them what street I was on. And there was no street sign, and I couldn't make out the house in front of me because there was a big pickup truck there. So I knew if I, I saw him walk through the cut through and then make a right behind other houses. I knew if I went straight and I didn't cut through where he went, that was the street that I lived on, mm-hmm. Retrieve Circle. And I knew if I got to that street, I could tell them the exact house number and mm-hmm. the street that I was at. So as I walked through, I looked to my right where he had gone through. Uh, the operator said, are you following him? And I said, yes. And they said, we don't need you to do that. And I said, okay. And I walked through to the other end of the street to give him the address. And as I was doing that, I said, he's not here anymore. He's gone. And they said, you don't see him? And I said, no, he's gone. And they said, do you still want us? And by this time, I've gone to retrieve you, Circle. And they said, do you still want us to send a police officer out? And I said, yes. And they said, well, where do you want the officer to meet you at? And I said, just tell them to go to the clubhouse, make a left. I didn't give them a description of my car. And I said, I'll meet them back at my car. So I walked through again. And as I was about halfway through, uh, he appeared out of nowhere. Are you still on the phone? No, I hung up. They said, we have an officer en route. And I said, okay, thanks. After he asked me if I wanted an officer there. They said, we have an officer en route. I told him to meet me in my car, and I hung up. Mm-hmm. And I put my phone away. And when I got about halfway to my car from the street, again, behind the houses in a dark area, I heard him say, you got a problem? And I turned around and I saw him and I went to go for my phone and sing sh- and call 911 and said I'm not emergency this time. Mm-hmm. But I, I guess I didn't have my phone in the pocket that I thought I had it in. I had it in my jacket pocket and I reached for my pocket and I was looking for my phone and he just punched me in the nose. And I fell backwards or to the side, somehow I ended up on my back. He ended up on top of me and he just kept punching my face and my head and I was screaming for help and he told me shut the fuck up and I kept yelling for help and I got a little bit of leverage and I started to sit up and then he took my head and slammed it into the concrete several times and each time I felt like my head was going to explode more than the last. I felt like I was going to lose consciousness and I, then I really I started screaming for help and he covered my nose with one hand and his, my mouth with the other one and he told me shut the fuck up and uh, I couldn't breathe, I was suffocating and all I could think about was I didn't want him to keep slamming my head on the concrete so I kind of shifted and squirmed my way out, not out from under him, but like to where, because the concrete was only, it was a sidewalk, and it felt like he only had my head on maybe a quarter of the concrete, and I could shift my way out and get onto the grass, where if he was slamming my head, it would just hit the grass and not the concrete. But when I shifted, my jacket came up and my shirt came up and exposed my firearm. And that's when he said, he like sat up and looked and said, you're gonna die tonight, motherfucker. And I felt him take one hand off my mouth and slide it down my chest. And I just pinched his arm and I grabbed my gun and I aimed it at him and fired one shot. He kind of sat back and said, you got me here, you, you got me, you got it, something like that. And I thought he was saying that he heard the shot and that he was giving up. So I pushed him off me, and I don't remember if I pushed him off me or I pushed him back. Either way, he, I ended up on top of him, straddling him. He was up uh, face down. 
And when he was hitting me in the face, in the head, it felt like he was hitting me with something in his hands. So I thought he had a weapon, and I grabbed his hands and I pushed them away from his body. And I said, stop. I said, stop. Just don't move. Mm-hmm. And he was saying something like, like ah, ah, and cursing. I said, stop. Don't move. And then somebody came, and they had a flashlight, and I thought it was a cop. And I said, I still had my gun in my hand as I was holding his hand out. And I said, uh, are you a cop? And he said, no. And I said, he said, I'll call them. And I said, I don't need you to call them. I, need, I already called them. They're on their way. I need you to help me restrain this guy. And he said, like, I'm calling the police. I'm already on the phone with them. And I got up off of him because he stopped struggling. And I thought he just, like, stopped struggling. And then I said, I holstered my weapon. I saw another flashlight. And I said, are you the police? Because I, I had blood all over my face and my eyes. Mm-hmm. And the flashlight, it was dark where I was. So the flashlight was really bright. And I said, are you the police? And he said, who shot him? And I said, I did. And uh, I put my hands above my head like that. And I don't remember if he told me to turn my back to him and walk back towards him. But I turned my back to him and I said, I did. And I raised my jacket, and I said, my gun's right there. I made, I think I told him a few times, my gun's right there. It's right there. And he said, I know where it is. Just keep your hands on your head. Don't move. I said, can you just, just take my gun? And he said, I'm taking care of it. Just don't move. So I stopped. He handcuffed me. Uh, he took my hands down and handcuffed me. Oh, that's when he brought my hands down. I said, my gun's right there on my right side. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't want him to think that, you know, I was going to grab for it or something. So he put my hands behind my back, handcuffed me, and then he took my gun. And uh, I think it was the same officer that took me to his car. And paramedics got there. They went to check on him first. And then they came over and uh, poured peroxide on my head, on the back of my head, felt my nose. Um, And they told, I don't remember if it was a police officer or another EMS guy. They said his nose is broken and he's going to need one, probably two stitches on the back of his head. Mm -hmm. And... uh, they said, uh, well, we're going to take him down for questioning. And uh, somebody said, should we take him to questioning or CFR first? And they said, no, we'll take him to the station first. And I didn't realize at the time CFR was Central Florida Region, the hospital. And I just got back in the back of the car and they brought me here. Okay. All right, so that was it. Were you on a phone at the time um, when uh, uh, he was beating you? No. Okay, so there was no communication between you and the call center at that point? No. Huh? I'm sorry. There was a guy that I couldn't really see because, like I said, there was blood in my eyes, mm-hmm. and I saw somebody looking out through the sliding glass door, and I said, help me, help me. And I think he said, I'm calling 911. But the guy was beating me in the head and the face, and but he might have so been on the phone. Possible with bystander there. Yes. Okay. He might have been on the phone with nine one one. I don't know. But I was not communicating with the police at that time. After he, he disappeared in through the cut through, okay, he turned to the right. You said, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, at that time, you hung up. Right around that time, you hung up with with uh, dispatch. Shortly after, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you were walking there. You're walking back through, but you walked through where he disappeared, right? Yes, sir. Okay. The next thing you know, he comes out of nowhere. Yes, sir. Um, he says, "You got a problem?" Yes, sir. Or something along that line. Okay. At that point, you went for your phone. 
Yes, I think they're quite sure in effect. I, I answered him. I said, no, I don't have a problem. Okay. And that's when, when I went for my phone and he punched her in the face. Um, and then you guys exchanged some, some, fight, some punches? I didn't hit him at all. I mean, I was trying to defend myself, but every time he punched me in the nose, it felt like my head was going to explode. Okay. Was it at that time you pulled out your gun? No. No. At any time prior to, did you pull out your gun? No. Okay. So this possible bystander that you told to call 911 or help, you should be able to tell us that your gun was still in your holster. Yes, sir. Okay. Or didn't see the gun. Correct. Okay. Because if it was in your holster, you probably wouldn't see it. No, sir. I mean, as we were wrestling, like I said, my jacket came up. I understand that. He's fine. But if you if you was to look out and, and look at you, you you're wouldn't have been in your hand or anything like that. Okay. And you, you don't know this guy? No. Okay. No. Well, other than, um, why did you uh, try to maintain such close proximity to him? To tell the police where he, what direction he was headed in. Did you feel that like you put yourself in danger? No, because I, where I was parked, my headlights were lighting, illuminating, mm -hmm. and I saw him turn down. The, and by the time I was on the phone with the non-emergency, mm -hmm. by the time I got to where he was at, I felt he had already made his way. I've called non-emergency probably a dozen times, and mm -hmm. they these guys are known just to run. As soon as they get suspicious, mm -hmm. they run and they know the neighborhood back and forth and mm -hmm. they just disappear in between houses mm -hmm. within seconds. Mm -hmm. So I kind of walked and I, I looked around the corner and he was gone. So I was, that's why I told him, uh, non emergency, he's gone. Okay. What was this guy wearing? Uh, gray hoodie and. I don't remember if they were gray pants or like stonewashed denim pants, I think. Denim pants? Pardon? Denim pants? Uh, no, like, uh, yeah, like denim, but like stonewashed. I think they were light colored. They might have been jeans. Okay. And he was a black man? Yes, sir. About how tall? Um, um, five, eight, nine. It was 5'11", I'd say. It's a six foot. Okay. When you're laying on the ground, you're laying on your back, right? Yes, sir. Okay. That's when your jacket came up and he saw that your gun, right? Yes, sir. Your gun on your left side, right side? My right side. Okay, so your gun's on your right side. You're, where were your hands at? Uh, trying to keep his hands okay. away. And then you felt, what did you feel next? His hand slide down my chest. He took one. He had one hand on his uh -huh. on my mouth and one hand on my nose, and he took one off. And that's when he said, "You're gonna die, motherfucker." And I felt his hand going down my the side of my mm -hmm. chest. And to so be honest, he felt something like this. Yeah, okay. kind of brushing. And to be honest with you, the whole time I forgot that I had the gun. Mm -hmm. When he said that I was gonna die, and then I felt him brushing. I it automatically clicked that he was going for so my. So your hands are up here defending yourself. His hand's going down. Yes, sir. Were you both your hands on the weapon? No, sir. Okay. Where was his hand when you went to retrieve the weapon? One hand was going towards the gun. He took it off my mouth. Right. And I was trying to get his hand. He was suffocating me, so I was trying to get his hands off of my face. Mm -hmm. So when I felt his hand, he let go of my mouth, so I wasn't trying to do anything again mm -hmm. with my right hand. So I grabbed my gun, and I don't know if he did it at the same time or what the case was, but I got to it first. Okay. And then how did you come to fire upon him from that position? Because you're laying down like this, okay, on your back, right? Yes, and then you just bring it out of the holster and straight up like this? Yes, sir. Okay. You didn't, like, try to pu push it into him or anything? No. You just fired it from almost, like, from the hip? I think I made sure that it wasn't because my hand was in the way. I made sure it was past my hand because his other hand was still on my face. Okay. So, so I made sure it was, was he that far away or he's right up on no, top no, no. of you? He was, 
he was mm-hmm. like putting all his weight on my nose and my mouth, okay. trying to suffocate uh-huh. me. So he was like creating a crevice with his body, uh-huh. and then he like when he slid to go for my gun. Did he go for your gun with his left hand or your right hand? I don't recall. I don't recall. Okay. Which hand he is? But one of the hands went. Yes, sir. Okay. The one was on your mouth. That that's when it clicked that I had my gun, and when he said. But the hand that was on your mouth, he went to you. He went to your. Yes, gun. sir. Okay. Wait, then you got it, and you went out like this. I think I went far enough to where I could make sure that it was past my other hand and in his general area. Well, you, from what you're describing to me, he's not that far away from you. No, he's on me. He's on top of you. Yes, sir. Right, so there's not a whole lot of distance between you and him. Right. So you can't really extend your arm. Correct. Because it, then you got a gun sticking out. What's, what kind of gun is it? Uh, Kel-Tec 9mm. Kel-Tec 9? Yes, sir. Okay, so it's probably only about that long, right? Shorter. Yeah. It's a little tiny gun, yes, sir. but still, yeah, I mean, I mean, you you don't have hardly any play no, sir. before that gun's directly into his chest. Correct. I was on him. I knew I was. And as soon as the round went off, he stopped trying attacking you. He yes, he sat back, and he said, "You got me, or you got it, whatever." Sure, it all happened just like quick too. It felt like an eternity. I was yelling for help. Sorry about that. No. It's cool. They always call it. Okay. Um. And I, I thought the police were there. They were gonna be there. They. So it felt like it took forever. Yeah, that part does go forever. I've been there before. Not in the situation you've had, but it takes, seems like it takes forever for you know, somebody to get there when you're really long. When, when in reality, it's only probably a couple of minutes. Okay. Let me, I'm going to step out for a minute. Yes, sir. When I come back, we're going to start developing questions. Okay? Yes, sir. Um, you need to use the restroom or anything? Uh, if I could just get more water. You need more water? Sure. Oh, uh, it's from the restroom. Yeah. You can. Good. Get the restroom. Oh, okay. Oh. So, it's right there. Yes, and then just come back in and sit down. Okay. Yeah, what was the last four of your case number? Hello? Oh, 
says, all right, I'm back in here again. I just came out to talk. Uh, good for you there, Chris. How did I think about it? I'd probably just be nosy. <laughs> but they seemed to, it was HR, they asked me. Yeah, I'm up to you, man. They asked for the police report, and I said, from what it sounded like, there wasn't going to be a report for a while. And they said, well, well, number one, we're not going to give anybody a copy of the report for a while because. Homicide investigations are not released until they're complete. Okay. Yeah. Seems like the major issue here, or what we're basically looking for in the scheme of things, is we're looking for your truthfulness as far as was the confrontational, or was the confrontation against you, and that a mutual confrontation. And um, I guess the other point would would you be in, in fear for your life? Yes. Okay. So. With those two in mind, I'm going to develop these questions. And what do you call the guy? You call him the kid? You call him the guy? The guy? Remember that. Is the color of the wall green? No. Okay. 
The other one is, uh, I'm going to preface it with, you were driving last night on your way to the store, correct? Which you never made, right? Yes. Okay. So therefore I know you drive, you have a driver's license. Okay. At some point in time in your life, I'm sure you've been stopped by the police for speeding. Yes. Okay. Um, what I want you to do is I want you to remember that situation when you were driving and then you first figured out that you were getting pulled over by the police or you first saw that cop, that feeling you got inside you, that oh shit feeling, um, your nerves went through the roof, um, your palms got sweaty, um, your throat got tight, okay, your heart started pounding, okay, you started breathing heavy, you got real nervous, okay, you remember that, the way you felt? I want you to remember that when I ask you this question. Have you ever driven over to post a speed limit? And you're going to tell me? Yes. No, you're going to tell me no. 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 Okay. You're going to lie to me again. Two questions you're going to lie to me. Okay. All right? Is the color of the walls green? No. Okay. Have you ever driven over to post a speed limit? No. Okay. Very good. Remember this. Okay? Okay. You got it? Yes. Okay. And then we're going to ask you this. Okay? These are the relevant questions. These are the questions I want to know whether you're telling me the truth or not on it. Okay? Were you in fear for your life when you shot the guy? Yes. Okay, since you don't know, you don't know this guy's name, can you call him the guy? Then I'll call him the guy. You good? Yes, sir. Okay. The other one is, did you confront the guy you shot? No. Okay. So both those, that one would be a no. The other one's going to be a yes. Correct. Okay, make sure I got it right. All right, that's it. That's all nine questions. Not bad? No. Okay. All right, what I want you to do, is that your own brother? Yes, sir. Okay. What you do is I want you to take that chair. Yes, sir. Turn it facing that wall and have a seat. Okay. What I want you to do is I want you to right here on your shirt. Okay. And once you relax, I'm going to sit with both feet on the floor, sit straight up, okay? Um, I'm not going to let you drink at this point for right now, sure. okay? But this is relatively quick, okay? You just went out and got something to drink? Yes. Did you go pee? Yes. Okay, so you're good? You're all relieved? Yes. Okay. Your stress level should be lower, okay? I'm going to ask you the series of nine questions. Remember the control questions? Yes, sir. All right, what are they? Uh, walls green. And your response to both of those is going to be? No. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, when I ask you, this, ask you all the questions, I want you to respond in a yes or no answer. Not yes or not no, sir. Don't add anything else to it. Just yes. That's a simple yes. Okay. Just like you've been talking to me this whole time. Okay. Don't try to modulate your voice. It's not going to work. Okay. If you try to modulate it or, or make it different, I'll be able to see it, and then we'll, we'll just have to probably redo it. Okay. Um, you're not going to skew the results, okay? It, it's going to remember I told you you can't do it, so don't even try. Um, that's pretty much about it. Um, if I ask you the same question twice, it's not that I didn't believe you. It's that something went wrong. Either I didn't hit the space bar on time, um, you answered too quickly, okay? Um, something something went awry, and then we got we do it, okay? Yes. So don't read into it. You get all nervous on me, all right? Yes. Alright, first what we're going to do is we're going to calibrate the machine. Let's see. Actually, I'm going to put on auto calibrate. And we'll see how it looks. Okay, I want you to give me a yes. Yes. Give me a no. No. A yes. Yes. A no. No. A yes? Yes. A no? No. Another no? No. And one more? No. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Is your name George? Yes. Is your name George? Yes. 
Is the color of the walls green? No. Is today Monday? Yes. Did you confront the guy you shot? No. Is this the month of February? Yes. Were you in fear for your life yes. when you shot the guy? Hold on. Let me finish the question. Were you in fear for your life when you shot the guy? Yes. Are we in the city of Sanford? Yes. Have you ever driven up to the posted speed limit? No. Am I wearing a watch? No. Am I wearing a watch? No. Okay. That was nine questions. Wasn't too bad, was it? No. Did it shock you every time you said something wrong? <laughs> no. Okay. It was was there anything that got you? No, sir. Okay, you can kind of turn it. I was, well, we're, not, we're not done yet. Go ahead and take it in for a while. I wasn't sure about the watch question. I didn't know if that was one I was supposed okay. to Remember, I don't have a watch. Mm -hmm. Okay. I sent your hesitation. Also, like I told you, don't, don't draw out your nose. I'm okay? sorry? This is oh. straight no. Oh, right. Not no. No. It seems like you were uncertain on a couple questions. Just remember, yes or no. Okay? Yes. Okay. That was a practice chart. <laughs> what it is, is um, what we do is we always do a <coughs> second chart. The reason why is, remember I told you stress? Yes. Stress is a big deal? Yes. Well, what we do is to, re it's situational stress. Okay? Just you being hooked up to, to the, the instrument, me reading into your soul, um, is causing stress on you. Okay? And it shows up on the, on the charts. So what we do is we run you through the questions. Okay, it's going to be the same questions again, um, and that's about it. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're going to run it one more time. Remember the control questions, which are: Are the walls green? And have you ever driven over the speed? Okay. Am I wearing a watch? No. Okay. Wait for me to finish asking the question completely. Okay. Okay. All right. You'll be all right. Is your name George? Yes. Wait, can we ask, finish asking a question, please? Is your name George? Yes. Is the colors of the wall green? No. Is today Monday? Yes. Did you confront the guy you shot? No. Is this the month of February? Yes. Is this the month of February? Yes. Were you in fear for your life when you shot the guy? Yes. Are we in the city of Sanford? Yes. Have you ever driven over the posted speed limit? No. Am I wearing a watch? No. Okay. We're all done. You take that off and you return to your seat over here.